For many people, the beauty of their world does not diminish the pain of their daily lives. Poverty, isolation, lack of education, and lack of access to resources cause more children and adults to die than any other causes. Since the early 1990s, the Environmental Health Project, USAID, and the ministries of several Latin American countries have employed the Community Participation and Intervention CPI model to affect social change and reduce infectious diseases. In high, rural, and isolated Andean communities, and in Peri urban settlements in Ecuador and Bolivia, the CPI model has helped communities create new local leaders, redefine traditional leadership routes and categories, change behavior, and reduce infectious disease rates. CPI model is the validation of local knowledge and the integration of ethnographic and epidemiological research methods provided in a series of interlocking community activities and skill building workshops over a period of 18 to 22 months. The workshops are all based on participatory, non-formal adult education techniques and are designed to intersperse classroom activities with community-based developments of leadership skills. Both workshop and leadership training activities focus on a community-recognized need, for instance, on the control of cholera or some other infectious disease, and are the basis of community organizing assemblies. the communities drew together to control the spread of cholera that had ravaged the community the preceding year. No family was untouched by the disease, and everybody had ideas about how it had spread, where areas of high risk were, and some things that people should do to avoid the disease. However, there was little agreement in the community about what should be done for the community as a whole. The CPI project introduced epidemiological information about cholera in the region to the community, trained community members to collect epidemiological information in the community, and facilitated community assemblies in which that information was shared. Simultaneously, members of the CPI project were introduced to ethnographic research and observation techniques, such as community mapping. These community maps of health risks along with locally generated epidemiological information, became the basis for intense community discussion and debate. Whether in rural or urban areas, ethnographic community mapping provides a way to bring the community together as they participate in drawing and discussing the maps and allows the outside researcher to learn about the community from the participants. The mapping exercise also facilitates the superimposition of epidemiologically derived health risks or other risks perceived by the community, thereby allowing discussion of those risks and the beliefs and behaviors associated with those risks. Bolivia and Ecuador, 
the training workshops teach process-based leadership and community organizing skills. They also provide substantive information about disease transmission routes, high-risk behaviors, biomedical and community health beliefs, as well as experiences from other similar communities with disease prevention or control techniques. Separate from, but of equal importance to the success of the CPI model, is the validation of local knowledge. Local knowledge combined with knowledge derived from other places enriches and sustains the CPI model when participants bring the results of their own experiences and beliefs and see that that information is given equal importance to the information brought from outside. The success of the CPI model in both countries is measured by three sets of indicators. One set focuses on health outcomes, such as decreased rates of infectious diseases, changes in individuals' high-risk behaviors, and increased knowledge of and concern with community-based health risks. The second set of indicators reflect whether or not the communities found the model useful enough to reproduce. And the third set of indicators measure success in terms of sustained leadership. Así, ah, se había un cambio notable, ¿no? Por en relación a las otras OTBs del área urbana. Yes, there has been an important change compared to the other urban OTBs. We were kind of sleeping before. There was no activity here. This motivated us to work together. We have learned a lot of things, such as how to identify the needs of the neighborhood and how to focus on them, how to prepare project proposals. Yes, I think that there has been an important change here. <laughs> In each of the communities in the two countries, infectious disease rates were down in comparison to similar non-intervention sites. The second indicator, reproduction of the model, also occurred. In one instance, the model was successfully replicated to teach farmers to reduce the incidence of goiter in their cattle. In another instance, the model was used to teach rural Andean elementary school teachers the importance of community health prevention activities. Development of sustained local leadership was the third indicator of the project's success. Women and students, two groups of people often excluded from leadership roles in Andean communities, were the immediate beneficiaries of the expansion in community leadership. However, the entire community benefited through the increase in numbers of people willing to contribute their energy and insight to improve the community. Community changes are most sustainable when people from the community become the leaders promoting and maintaining culturally appropriate changes. By combining leadership training, epidemiological and ethnographic research techniques, this model gives communities the skills they need to identify community risks and to develop community-based interventions that are both appropriate and sustainable.